Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. It's the midweek show, and we have each brought a conversation that we're dying to have. So let's talk some baseball. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, brought to you by DraftKings. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake, and in the corner is producer BBD. The three of us are coming from the beach house because it's beach week. And Trevor mm. is California strong, California bro. Grew up on a surfboard, and he's coming to you from California. Used to sleep on a surfboard. How you doing, Trev? James, Jacob, Big Big Dong. Uh, I did not sleep on a surfboard. I had a bunk beds actually with my older brother, uh, which is kind of cool. Like that a lot. Uh, things are good out here though. I, I miss you boys. I like that you're having fun at the beach house. I got a little bit of FOMO. Um, I do want to pose a question to you before we start. Okay. I know this is talking baseball. This is kind of a football question, mm. more of a fan question. Uh, as you guys know, me and Maddie staff, our relationship is just taking right. off. Yes. Just real, real good guy. Really like him. Going to the game on Sunday uh, with his fam. Wow. That's um, awesome. So, you know, look, I, I got to support my guy. I will be right. wearing a Matt Stafford jersey. You know I'm a Seahawks fan. Did you get the jersey yet? I have. Okay. How'd you get it? Looks good on me. Did you just I ordered buy it one? Myself. Okay. Okay. Just curious. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Rams play Seattle. Mm. Or, yeah, right, when the Rams play Seattle, say mm-hmm. I'm watching the game with them. Like, wh- what do I do? You root for Seattle to win uh, and Stafford to play well. But I don't. No. There's, there's more going on here. There's a chance that I go up to Seattle with them. Oh, well. It's and, like, that's my home, but. I can't root for Seattle when I'm with them. And now I'm thinking like, is Maddie staff going to make me change fully to becoming a Rams fan hometown team? Or Do does I he think switch? Would he think less of you if you don't root for your team? And he's like, what dude you made me, I changed your fandom. Like, I guess you weren't a big fan he, at all. I don't anyway. think he cares that much. It's, I think it's more of a problem for me okay. in, inside. And I'm curious what you guys would do. I don't know. I'm very much caught here um, thinking, like, do I just make the switch to becoming a Rams fan today? After being a Seahawks fan probably for a good eight years now, I want to say. That doesn't really, like, how big of a fan are you? you I know? have the answer. Jake's got the answer. Trev, Okay. this is game one with a new friend in L.A., Mm-hmm. you can still believe in your Seahawks and they can lose this game. This game is huge for your new friend, Matt Stafford. Well, it's not game one, right? Yeah, no, I'm going game one. They're playing the Bears. Yeah, game one, he's rooting That's for Stafford. That's easy for me. I'm talking about going up into Seattle. When is that game? It's later on. You've I'm got... Far away. Yeah, you've got so much to play out by then, Trev. You're rooting for your guy until then. That's a later problem. When they get love- to Seattle, if that game matters, then you're in a tight squeeze, then we've got to get creative. But for now, you're just go, Matt, go, man. The thing is, it's not like baseball either. Like like he like one player can make a huge difference. So like I don't know, man. I love Russell Wilson, love me some Maddie Staff. I I'm leaning like I'm just might convert. Wow. Sounds like you're a Rams fan. I mean, wow. why don't you watch him play know, once? Do you think that if we do a live show in Santa Monica or in your area again, y- you would invite him to come and sit in the family section to watch you record? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, How deep does this friendship go? Things trip? just got real. <laughs> things just got yeah. real. Easy, James. Mm. <laughs> only, the, only, only the cream of the crop get to watch us record. Okay. That's Why? true. Okay. That's right true. now, Zach's here. He's not even looking at us. Yeah. Can't. Saturday. Jake, how you doing? Trev, I didn't get an answer, by the way. You guys did not. You're know. rooting for Matt Stafford and the Rams this weekend. They're playing the Bears. When you go to Seattle, if you don't, here, here's the answer. If you don't root for Seattle when you go to Seattle, 
you're you can't like right. take off that, that does game kind of end and it. then say, but I'm going to be a Seattle fan later on. So at that point, you do have a very hard decision to make because you will be ending your fandom, or you will be staying loyal. When you to go Seattle. to Seattle, you will bet the over, um, because then you're rooting for both teams. Uh, so that's a solution there, and then you play the result at that point. Um. You know, if, ooh, like a one game for my fandom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, wow. that's you know, you're already teetering. If Matt Staff drops it in front of the twelfth man and you're thirteenth man, like you know, that's kind of it. Like you're a Matt Staff guy. Okay. Problem solving, Jake. How you doing, man? Good, man. We're at the beach. We got the dogs floating around. Um, hmm. We're in like the Midler area beach week. You know, the weekend just happened. Labor Day. Oh snap, that was lit. Um, you know, we've got a couple. Uh, we've got a couple uh, friends coming tomorrow. That kind of starts like the second half of beach week. Right now, we're in transition. We're cranking out a lot of work. Me and Zach are just editing and editing. Um, looking at Zach at it, um, but. Yeah, man. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays are, are big. It's Mondays days. and Tuesdays. So we're, it's kind of, this is the tough. This is where we mix business with pleasure. This is, you know, mm-hmm. you're having lasagna and cheesecake, and you're like, whoa, this is getting real. So, you know, we're going to crank through the week. And then I, I think, you know, through tomorrow, you know, dogs are getting groomed at that point. Like, the end of whoa. Beach Week is going to, like, one up the start of Beach Week. It's true. It's true, Trev. You'd be jealous because we played spike ball on the beach yesterday mm. as the sun was setting. It was beautiful. And we walked and got ice cream, and then we watched some funny movies together. And tonight, I'm cooking for everyone, so you'd be super jealous. Jeez, I am jealous of you guys, for sure. Loaf when is the earliest beer cracked? Like, what was the earliest time a beer was cracked? Uh, I don't know. That, that's not me. I, I mean, don't think we've done it. Mondays and Tuesdays are work days. Well, not Mondays and Tuesdays. Like the weekend. I think Sunday. Oh, Sunday probably. Sunday 11, was a little noon. before noon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys are being responsible. Yeah. A lot of people. Lot Dogs. Of baby or two. Mm. Yeah, there's kids on on the weekend. Slow burn. Yeah. All right. Well, Jake's got something he wants to Late talk about. Late night Saturday, Trev. Jake and I researched our butts off for this episode, just mm. to let everyone know. Yeah. A lot of lesser pods they go on a beach week. They're not jamming yeah. tons of shows and research into their days, you know? We brought Prove it. Show me your butt. Show me your butt. Or lack thereof. Jake's got a good butt. What are we talking about? You just worked your butt off. Oh. There's a cheek. Still the hell. Oh my God. <laughs> Who gives a shit? It's 2021. Show a little <laughs> butt, people. <laughs> Um, and that brings me to my topic. Which is brought to us by Roman. Yes. Speaking of showing butt and being yeah. Roman ready, no one's perfect. Even the best baseball players strike out with the bases loaded. If the, that image of my butt didn't give you a boner, you should probably get Roman. Yeah, you should probably check yourself out. The best guy, I'm over here. Laptops floating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the best That's guy. not going to help the rumors, man. <laughs> the, the best guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best golfers sometimes three putt with the tournament on the line. Mm-hmm. So if you feel like you come up short in the bedroom sometimes, it's perfectly okay. If there's something bothering you, there are options. you got to go to GetRoman.com slash John Boy now. Uh, you can get a free online evaluation, ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. And getting started is simple. You just go to GetRoman.com slash John Boy and complete an online visit. The process is straightforward and discreet. So go to GetRoman.com slash JohnBoy now to get $15 off your first month. There's a straightforward way to take care of ED, so you got to go get that done. $15 off your first month. BBD, do you think Jake should go to GetRoman.com slash JohnBoy? It can't hurt. I'd like to be Roman ready. Always. Well, you are Roman ready for this segment. Yeah. Did a lot of put, put the effort in. You got to, yeah, and I'm still, you know, if I could have a little kick at the end, that would always help. Roman. Uh, so I'll walk you guys through my full thought process. Okay. Midweek episode. Bring some topics. Jim, you know there's a topic I absolutely love, but it's going to have to wait a week or two. It's okay. the, the final two weeks to change your whole season's outlook. I love that. So, so I'm going to save that for a couple weeks. You know, the guys that are at like a 780 OPS. Two good weeks, you're an 800 OPS guy. So we're going to save that. That goes on the back burner. So where I decided to land, Trev, you know we love living 
giving dudes love on this show. Get Roman. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think a couple of, a lot of these guys for us aren't going to be huge cuts because we're a baseball pod. We're the number one baseball pod in the world. But I think it's just going to be a little eye-opener because I, I wanted to compare some of the big names that you just know. Uh, I call this segment Who You Know and Who You Should Know for the 2021 season. Um, so I just went by position, and I got some player comp stuff going up that I think will really make people appreciate some of these guys just a little more. Uh, so we'll chew through it quick. Um, so, you know, the first one that I think I want to talk about, well, we'll go around the horn. I'll go to catcher. And the cream of the crop in catching, if you're any baseball fan, you know it's JT Real Muto. It's been him for the past couple of years. Uh, BBD's Phillies infield pick that constantly gets discussed. And guess what? JT is having a great year. Um, he, he turned it around. It started a little slow, um, but 111 games. And there's a reason I wanted to highlight him. Because there's some, there's the next tier of catchers. Um, that, that There's a couple guys that are having great years that should be discussed. Narvaez, Murphy, like... Uh, Will Smith, and we stumbled into this last episode. And it, it's just kind of... I don't understand why Will Smith doesn't get talked about more. I don't know if it's I told you Kershaw and the personal catcher. I don't know if it's his name. It's, like it's like a James very said, boring name. So he's like the fifth most famous Will Smith. This might even for the real baseball people. This is going to seem like a soft open. Will Smith has a so him and JT have played the same amount of games. So I thought that was fun. One eleven on the nose. Wow. Will Smith has 22 homers. JT is 14. Um, they both are hitting 265. Mm. Will Smith has a better on base percentage by 25 points, 375 to 350. Uh, a better w- weighted runs created plus 138 to 113. I mean, Will Smith is the cream of the crop this year. Um, and. You know, I, I know end of last episode we stumbled into his career stats and that they're all on par with that. Will Smith has an argument for the best catcher in baseball, and I, I don't think he should back down from it. His defensive stuff rates positively this year, um, and I just think I have, I have some lesser names in the baseball community coming up at positions, but that, that's where I landed on the catcher position. I like it. That's good to know. Uh, Real Muto definitely has the majority of the market share in the catcher premier name. Is that like that came out of nowhere? The best catcher in baseball. I think like you know what it was. Uh, like it, he trademarked that or something. Like did somebody was somebody that before him? Like did they call people that? Yeah, a lot of people are getting upset right now. Cardinals fans, Giants fans, a lot of the people that have premier catchers. But uh, Ramuto, when he puts up offensive numbers, they're, like, really good. Miami had some beat reporters, and they had not a lot going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the one thing that was coming out of Miami for a little bit, a couple years, I think 17, 18, was Real Muto's the best catcher in baseball. That was almost the tagline. So okay. the Dodgers... They don't need to hype up Will Smith because he's probably 10th on their hype up list. Real Murdo had two years there where he was like the dude. Yeah. Getting love. It's it's crazy because you look at his overall offense numbers, Will Smith, I'm talking now, they're incredible. And he's going to hit sixth, seventh in their lineup. Yeah. There's probably more on the Dodgers lineup later. But can I ask I, you a question? To your point, Trev. Jim, I think that's. Uh, maybe another reason why people... I mean, I, I'm in L.A. I hear Will Smith all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm. His middle name is Dills. Now, do you think if his name Ooh. was Dilly Smith, he'd be mm. more well-known? If at birth they decided, we're naming you Will Smith, it's a family name, but, you know, or maybe, like, you know, he goes to kindergarten, first grade, and the nickname Dilly sticks because his middle name's Dills. And the Dodgers catcher's name is Dilly Smith. Is his name in more headlines? The answer is yes. Dilly dilly. No, there's, there's no argument there, Jim. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the, the, where I didn't want to compare this was Salvi Perez, who's now at 41 homers, his defensive metrics grayed out pretty poorly this year. And I know that's been a hot, yeah. hot in the streets topic on the internet, um, offensively on the whole. And Hey, this is some fan graphs number stuff, but 
They're saying Will Smith is better, having a better offensive season than Salvi Perez, who just hit his 41st homer the other day. So, uh, Dill Smith, as he's now known on this show, um, that, that should be an off-season conversation. Is Dill Smith the best catcher in baseball? Um, moving on, I think, I think this next oh, one. Wait, 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 okay. wait, 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 wait. Just one, one before we move on. I, yeah. I like this topic. So I like catchers. Sure. You guys are catchers, guys, too. Now, Jimmy, you love catchers. Jim, big catchers guy. Big catcher I can't guy. take that over him. Yeah. Okay. Where's Posey at right now? So, I like, think... come on. Like, you got to mention, you got to mention this guy. He is a part of the conversation with the year he's having. Uh, he is toe-to-toe with Will Smith offensively. Will Smith does have him clipped this year. Um, well, actually, it becomes the catcher's games played conversation. Um, okay. And, as I think we're going to talk about later in the episode, I think Dill and Buster... Uh, trademark that um, Dylan Buster. I would go Buster and Dill. I think the com- the off season best catcher conversation, especially on the left coast. I think a lot of this postseason could decide that. Um, mm. So, and again, teasers for later in the episode. Posey's just been doing it. Like that San Francisco Giants coaching staff. I, like, it's crazy. Hot. Who who could have foresaw that being a hot topic? It's genius. Here. I could because you told me. Yeah, thank you, James. Okay. I believed. Um, it's a boring combo, but you definitely told me. <laughs> God, we argued about that. So Damn. Much. Uh, Shots fired. Um, was that g- pandemic talk? No, it was PPP. PPP talk, which TPP. Oh, yeah. I think we were just getting into like the heart of the TPPs, and it was like, what does anything really mean? And the Giants, it turned out they meant something this year. Trevor's all over. Trevor Plouffe with the scoop. In the buff, being rude. Um, all right, so this next one, Trev. There's a guy now playing first base in the Bronx, Anthony Rizzo. Oh, mm. oh, Tony Rizzo. Everyone in baseball knows him. He's beloved. T- got the Cubs the trophy. He's on the Yanks right now. He's probably going to get them the trophy. Everyone in baseball, you know Rizzo. He slaps it around. He he wasn't having the great first half to this year. Hopefully, his numbers are going to continue to pick up. But you know, he's like a one and a half WAR right now. Um, you know, not a crazy season, 249, 345, um, 117 games, 18 homers. Uh, there was two guys I really considered highlighting from uh, the first base position. The guy who stood out, uh, and he's a guy that I know we've started to enjoy talking about, but it, it's Ty France. Um, mm. Ty, Ty France, his offensive numbers go... Uh, toe to toe with a lot of big names. Two ninety two, three sixty four, a four forty nine, uh, slugging. The defensive numbers actually don't love him on Fangraphs. Um, I was between him and Yuli, uh, but I think Yuli is known, especially with some of those Astros runs. Oh, the dogs are pissed that I didn't mention Yuli. Um, and I could see him even battling. He was in the batting title. Uh, Ty France like is now on the all. You need to know him, baseball team. Fangraphs likes his season above Joey Votto, Jose Abreu, Pete Alonzo. I mean, the big names at the position. Um, I mean, I'm learning. That's what I'm – I'm getting the Thai, Thai France. You do have to – a caveat of, like, this is, like, on a single season. And the right. reason you know names yes. is for multiple seasons. And that's – I wanted to get some of the young guys out there, and I did leave out a couple – I don't want to say a couple fluke risks, but I tried to leave out a couple fluke risks. Okay. I mean, Ty France he leads did. the league and hit by pitch, 22. I wonder if he changed his stance. A He's following bit. Rizzo. Yeah. He did um, have a good 2020 as well. I know it's a short season, so you can say two years in a row now, though. Well, just let's combine them and see what the total. His last 171 games, he has 130 OPS plus. It's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. Good job by Ty France. <laughs> it's interesting because he's kind of a late bloomer, too. He's 27 years old now. Um, debuted in, at 24 in 2019 with the Padres. Um, what? Yeah, I mean, I need to take a closer look at him. Let's because do it. Because the hit by pitches does suggest that he got closer to the plate. I Taking away it. the outside corner. I need, I need to go do a deep dive. You brought that up, Jim. Now my mind is spinning. It's racing. Uh, I might be giving right. the best you, color commentary that's ever been given ever. this episode. Thank you, James. Thank you. You did say, Jake, that we're going to know a lot of these names because we are a baseball pod. Ty France has kind of been all over our radar, my fellow countrymen. Yep. 
Um, he's also from LA, from Downey. So oh, I'm kind of into him now. An I'm gonna go LA Frenchman, like yourself. Maybe that'll be my Thursday sequence episode. Look at that ad. Yeah, flip play live, or is that tomorrow? It's today, later today. today. Okay. I'm oh wait, no, it'll yesterday be, by it'll the be time yesterday when people are listening. Book. So time travel yes. a little bit. Um, mm. Fellas, a couple things on the second base position. Second base, normally thought about as kind of a slight position. There are a lot of guys having years now. Um, I thought about Jonathan India. I actually, Jim, left him off for the pure rookie part and because he hasn't added Trev yet as a friend. Um, so at second Still base... Hasn't. Um, I brought up Whit Merrifield. Everyone in baseball knows and loves Whit Merrifield. If you've been following baseball, like the guy you knew on the Royals the past few years was Whit Merrifield. Um, and he plays his game. Like, let's be honest, he's a contact hitter. Um, and I think his last couple seasons have fallen off a little bit. Guys, there were options here. Uh, even Trev's Jorge Polanco in Minnesota has turned it back on, but since their games turned haven't on. since their games haven't mattered, I actually eliminated him. Wow! And the Twins don't really know what to do with him, um, so that's a conversation for the offseason, I think. I'm giving it to B. Lau, man. Ooh. Brandon Lau, do you guys know how many homers he has on the year? Twenty five, thirty something, right? Thirty three. Brandon Lau. I saw that on the bottom line. That shocked me. Brandon Lau is going to sneak up on a 40 homer, 100 RBI year. <laughs> is he really? He's got 84 RB, or 82 RBI, 84 runs. Um, man, a 504 slugging from a second baseman. He, uh, his offensive numbers, I mean, him, S- Simeon, Muncie, and Polanco. Um, are kind of in rare air for second baseman this year. So uh, I want to give b one of the one of the engines behind the Tampa Bay Reigns train some love. Good it's for him. If you do go over his stats this year, they basically mirror his career stats. Didn't he fit? Uh, didn't he hit like an awful slump last year? Wasn't he on slump watch for yes. like the whole last month of the season? It, and then I think he was the really season. hot. Best player in the first month. Yeah. And then the worst he was the MVP. Second. Talk first month last year, yeah. and then in the and I think he got off to a slow start again in April this year. We can double check the stats. Yeah, and then it was a tough postseason. Besides, like one big big home run, I believe. Mm-hmm. And this is this is so freaking Rays. They got him right now. Doing you just said he might have he's closing in on forty and a hundred from a second baseman. They signed him to a six year twenty four million dollar deal which runs through 24, and guess what? It's got team options for <laughs> 25 and 26. They signed him to a six-year, $24 million contract? I think That, that was in 2019, so I think that might have been Some like... Some of his arm. Most of his arm. That's $4 million a year. Yeah. When you guys they, they signed... Si- they signed him after 2018, I believe. He had uh, 43 games into his career. <laughs> so the like Rays the don't Ray. Going right. Dude, I hope the CBA fixes that. Well, He's that's, locked in at that's four not the, that's million not the dollars. CBA. A year. That's that's him taking that's him taking Yeah, I guess, but they're no, buying out arbitration yeah. because he knows he's not gonna be a free there should be fewer arbitration years so they can't buy you out on the cheap. Four sure. million dollars a year. He's and how old is he? He's twenty he just turned twenty seven. And he has five years left of this? It run, if they want, they, they have, have him until he's thirty four. His ability to make big money is off the table, no matter how good. He I don't plays. know what his options After are. 32. Let's go look at his options. I'm looking at them. He makes four and a million half and next. And a half. Yeah, the options are ten and a half and eleven and a half. He makes four, five point two, and eight point seven. I mean, he's getting paid uh, money, joke. but I mean, he could become a top ten player and and never get his worth ever. That's crazy. Well, yeah, if he was going into like say, let's say second year arb and he's putting these type of numbers up, he's going to command 10 to 11 million dollars. Usually when you buy out a guy's arb, you have to at the end it has to get the 10 million dollars. That's kind of standard. That's what it, it is at the end, right? No, those are, the, those option are the options years. for tag the options. on years. What's the last year? They're, and they're not going to pick up those options at the race. Right. The last so year, the, the last year million. before options is 8.7. They, the but years they get, go. Each they, year goes up, and but they, they usually they, they, they did those are arms. So they'll trade him. 
They will trade him before his last year. Yeah, because he's locked in to being cheap as shit. That sucks. That's Ray's gone Ray. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, be so pro Ray in my segment, and then that's the shit that makes (laughs) me so anti Ray right there. (laughs) Wait, but like, I don't know. It's not the Ray's fault. No, I mean he, but he didn't even bet on himself, so that's kind of disappointing. It's not even the CBA necessarily because this is this form this format of team it, control has been going on for a long time. So it is they need a less in the years. Be, yeah, but this is gonna this is will continue to go on no matter what teams offering money. I I know, young but guys. I know. I just think they need a less in the years because if you break into the league at twenty six, uh, you're gonna take a deal where you buy at your arbitration. Did you the MLB put an offer out which was ridiculous? Nah, I think we it was can't like do labor twenty nine guaranteed agency or something like that. You can't go into labor pod yet. Can't off season. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so juiced up. Labor oh pod coming soon. A little love for B Lau. B um, freaking Lau. Again, I I think third base. This is going to become more of an appreciation because he's a he's almost a day one talking baseball guy. The comparison I'm going to throw out is Chris Bryant. Um, Chris Bryant who. I checked with the Giants. He actually played more third base than outfield so far, which was surprising. Longoria just came back, so I think that changes. But we've had so many debates on this show. Chris Bryant, is he a third baseman? Is he not a third baseman? What's going on? Um, Chris Bryant, he's in San Fran now. Speaking of a guy who should get the bag, um, hope Trev's still listening because I think Chris Bryant could be a you know 100 mil plus type free agent this year. Mm. Um and there's a guy, he's a, he's a favorite of talking baseball, so the, the people here, it's just a reminder of how good his season really is. It's young, thick Austin Riley. Chris Bryant mm. has a 129 weighted runs created plus. Um, you know, one of, if you put his numbers with third baseman, they're one of the top third basemen this year. Young, thick is putting him under the table. Uh, a 305 batting average from Young Thick, 377 on base, a 538 slugging, a 141 weighted runs created plus. Know who's that one weighted runs created plus 141 from Young Thick is higher than Devers and Ramirez as well. Young like Thick is having a special year in it. I I do think he is breaking through as well as as people knowing that more so than Ty right. France. As it as it comes in the Braves and that team, um, but holy crap, man! I need to go back and look what I said exactly about Austin Riley. Did I motivate him? Was I being like, "Hey, man, you got to step up," or did I say something like, "If it hasn't happened, not going to happen"? I'm I I know I said some things because I wanted J Ram there, so I, I need f- to go yeah. check that out. We'll have to figure it out. But yeah, uh, a young thick appreciation. His uh. The only other third baseman with offensive numbers that are in his flight zone are Jose Ramirez and Rafael Devers this year. Dude, the Braves have so much space, so much money to spend. I was doing a little dive on it this morning. $77 million in, in guaranteed wow. money next year. You were just in the That's Braves without... financials this morning? I was, I was. <laughs> That's not – we're the number one baseball pod. Of course yeah, I am. you're right. Um – that's without Freddie Freeman, obviously. So please re-sign Freddie. It's going to cost you thirty million bucks, right? Do it. So puts him at one hundred and seven guaranteed money. They can go out and get a lot, a lot more mm. to complement. And then maybe you throw a little bit of a bag at Austin Riley. Like they're going to try to do that. Oh, they've definitely tried with all their young guys because that just they don't that gives them a better. They, area to play in coming forward. Yeah, the Cunha 700 is obviously incredible for them. Uh, they do have Max Fried coming up. He's going to start making some money as well. Um, but it wouldn't shock me if they made a few offers to Riley. They don't have to. That's the thing is that the leverage is so much in the team's favor. They don't have to offer anything. They could just say, cool, man, we love how good you are. And now we got three more years, and we can just pay you. If you're good, we'll pay you what you're worth. But not really because you're you're comped at uh, your first year arbitration. So it'll be interesting. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that and maybe give you guys a number at the end of the show that I think the Braves might offer him this year. That's huge. Uh, stay tuned Thanks. for that. Um, the shortstop position. I mean this this got a little tricky for me because 
you know, you can't give Trey Turner any more love. Brandon Crawford having a monster year. But, again, if you're a baseball you know guy, him. you know Brandon Crawford. Um, Nicky Lopez would have been the real outside shot, having a nice year for Kansas City, um, racking up some more. But the answer is just Willie Adamas, which, again, if you're talking baseball, faithful, you know what's going on. But I do think people – People think of Willie Adamas as almost a raised party trick, and now that he's on the Brewers, like kind of that Brewers magic as well. Um, Willie Adamas on the year has 22 homers. Uh, that is, excuse me, um, you know, that's tied with Carlos Correa for home runs this season. Um, Willie Adamas has a 484 slugging that is the same as Carlos Correa's. Um, you know, he's out batting average, guys like, t- or not batting average, on base, Tim Anderson. Um, you know, just some of the class shortstops of the league. And I, I know we've been saying, like, Willie Domus has been good with Tampa. There's a story there that makes sense. Uh, you, We are going to have to see it next year to fully believe, but he said he couldn't see the ball in Tampa. All of the numbers passed that check. And, man, he's... He's nasty with the glove, too. And a nice smile. He smiled at us. He dapped us up. He showed us some tongue in, in Milwaukee. So, like, full Willie Adamas. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and find his splits where I take out this season. Mm. I don't want to take out any time with the Rays. I want to take out every game at the Trop. Trop games. Since he went on record saying I couldn't see there. His, I think his career numbers, if you take out the Trop, are like, whoa. Uh, shout out, uh, Willie, because it was his birthday a couple days ago on September 2nd. He turned 26 years old. Whoops. That's crazy. You know, yeah, I, to go on the smile and the tongue, I didn't see tongue. I don't know where you saw tongue. Oh, Maybe you weren't there. You, 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 there you went the up. Tongue. You went you, to the bathroom. You went I to think. the bathroom and he flashed oh, tongue at us. Slugging beers all day at the... Mm. Brewers game, which makes sense. Six foot two ten, like he's got a nice body, looks good in a uni too. Mm. Like that matters. That does he's matter. Got the confidence. I mean, it man. doesn't matter for That's, Moose. Mm. He, uh, he's the what do you call that? Exception to the rule. Sure. Hot. That's not what I was going to say, but yeah. Um, Trevor Story, who also might get, who will get a hundred mil plus bag this off season. Willie Adams is out hitting him in basically every category this year. Um, so that's, you know, just a scope for our guy, Slick Willie. Uh, that brings us to the outfield. You know what? Let me get this out of the way because this blew my mind, and I want you guys to check out the numbers after. I'm going to jump to center field because um, I was like, okay, who can I compare it to? Because there's a couple guys in center field who are on very bad teams that are having incredible years. Cedric Mullins and Brian Reynolds. We talk about them a lot. We talk about them a lot, and they deserve it. They've been on the all-JM teams. Uh, they are stars of this game, what they're doing offensively. Guys, I I didn't have anyone to compare them to because none of the good center fielders have played games this year. Byron Buxton has played 37 games. Luis Robert, 46. Mike Trout, 36. Cattell Marte, 68. Loriano, 88. Um, Cedric Mullins and Brian Reynolds are the only two guys um, who are center field center fielders. Sorry to all the Chris Taylor stands out there. Cedric Mullins and Brian Reynolds just need super love. Um, Cedric Mullins as well. Like, what's he got to play for? It, Besides he, just trying to prove that he's so good. He's just trying to get 30 30, um, 26 homers, 26 steals, 307, 370, a 538 slug from Cedric Mullins. Like, him and Brian Reynolds, who casual 299, 382, 513 slug, what they're doing in center field is unmatched across the league. Couple people could bark about Starling Marte stuff with that, but he also missed a bunch of games, and his stolen bases numbers are kind of skewing things. Which skewing sounds illegal, and I love you, Starling. But um, Mullins and Reynolds, they don't they don't even have the baseline to compare this year because n- people haven't been there. Yeah, and I mean Reynolds is Mullins. We know what happened. He stopped hitting right handed and became a superstar. <laughs> like I love that. So story. cool. It's a great freaking story. Uh, Reynolds, though, great 2019 comparable to what he's doing this year. A little bit under mm-hmm. the mark. 
But then 2020, the pandemic year was not kind to him. And I wonder why. I haven't asked a lot of guys, you know, I think that'd be a fun little segment that we do. Like, let's go see, see who struggled during the pandemic year and who flourished and then try to find out why, like, why do you think Brian Reynolds went from an 880 OPS in 2019 to a 632? Can it be because they saw the same, they saw the same pitchers just more often could, would that, you know, they played in division. There was less travel. They saw they only played nine other teams. You, the more you see the pitchers, the better, dude. Can it just be two I, bad I, months? Like, it was 60 yeah, games last exactly. year, yeah, you it know? Could be. It could be, yeah. It could be that, hey, he didn't get a chance to get hot. They, the A's, I'm rocking the A's jersey. They didn't give me a chance to get hot in 2017. Mm. They shot me and threw me out of the pastures. Is that what people yeah. say? Yeah. When they compare yeah. you to... Livestock. Normally, I'm the livestock comp on here. All right, I have his numbers. In 61 games, 264 plate appearances, not at the trop. Willie Adamas' slash line is a 314 batting average, 371 on base percentage, 541 slugging, 912 OPS from the shortstop position. Those are insane, incredible numbers. This guy was on record saying it was hard for him to pick up the ball at the trop, which was his home stadium. So every game he's played, not at the trap, 314, 371, 912 slugging in his games at the trap, 156 batting average, 229 on base percentage, 557 OPS. I think he was telling the truth. The br- Who did he get traded for? The br- Fire Eisen and another reliever. Oh, my goodness. The Brewers are peacocking that around the league. I the got, Brewers I, I got raised. These numbers out. Does that make sense? Well, the I think the Rays are punching so much air about their dumb stadium. Yeah, because like they they can't do it. Like I don't. I almost don't fault the Rays for doing that. Like getting rid of him. Right. But. But, like that's cheap. <laughs> that's freaking cheap. Do you think? Do you think? The Brew Crew. We we met some of their brain trust. Sure. Uh, do you think they just read that article or like, like every team had that information, right? Dude, there's no way like nobody looked that up. Trevor, that's what I would love to know because you know the Rays had conversations about Willie Adamas with other teams. How many of them had a hunch and were willing to Fire rate? Ryzen and another reliever. We're talking about a 26 year old starting shortstop. The other reliever is Rasmussen, who. If- I think Glass now said has like the nastiest stuff in their pen. Right, but. and it's Rays, okay. but they Rays, like him. But it's but, a short stuff. But yes, it's relievers who the Rays breed slash trade for. They like both guys they got, but a lot of lot of uh, horse jokes today. That the Rays were punching air when they decided they had to trade Adamas. Like, yeah. what do we do? Like, it, like we have to trade him? Or, I mean, they didn't have to trade. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. The Brewers raised. Brewers raised. Um, so, hey, Cedric Mullins and Brian Reynolds, when you guys are talking baseball this year, this offseason, talk about what they did in center field. Literally is not matched this year. Chris Taylor, little love, but, again, your utility thing has screwed you this year. <laughs> um, so we, we have two short kings on this list. Trev, and we've got short kings coming. Are you giving B-Lau short king? Um... Not really. I don't have him as a short king. 5'10". It feels honest, and that's like, back in the day, that's kind of what you wanted your second baseman to be. Is 5'9 the cutoff for short king, or is it 5'8"? I think in pro sports it's like 5'9", but Jake's saying, do we trust that he's actually 5'10", and Jake and I both trust it. That's the game. Like When I see B. Lau on the field, it feels 5'10". Like, okay. if B. Lau said he was six foot, then I might call him a short king because you're a liar. Like, Gene I Segura is listed six Gene, foot. Gene really Segura is listed 5'10. We saw Gene Segura up close. This is nowhere near 5'8. Easy. I mean, yeah. 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 Easy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also the body composition. B. Lau is a little yes. bit thinner. You know, you get that whole thing, the visual there. Segura is very much Jake. If Brandon Lau was 5'11, I don't think we'd flinch. Listed okay. 5'11". Um, okay. So that's on him. Speaking of short kings, and man, this if you're a Rays fan, 
this episode is going to be all over the goddamn board for you. Because in the corner outfield, my who you knows are actually Rays. Mm. Friend of the pod, Austin Meadows, who's been having a really nice season. Uh, uh, we, yeah, no respect to Meds. I don't think non AL East fans know his name. I think yeah, baseball people, World Series and stuff. I I think you're in it. And that the other guy's gotten so much discussion. The oh, other guy. That's a good point. The other guy you have to know because he's the best ever. Randy Rosarena. You know his name. He's you. he's the best to ever play baseball. Um, yeah. I'll I'll start with Meds. He's having a nice year. He I think he was on an All JM team. 124 games, 24 homers, 72. Uh, uh, or excuse me, 97 RBI. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meds having a nice year, a 115 uh, weighted runs created plus. Trev, speaking of short kings, Tyler mm-hmm. O'Neill. Yes, I knew you were going there. A 130 weighted runs created plus. 23 homers. Um, he's got a 509 slugging, 343 on base. Here's the thing that was interesting that I need – some Cardinals eye test. I need to know what's going up with the defensive metrics. Tyler Mm O'Neill, he's currently grades out as the number one left fielder on fan graphs. Yeah. Hell yeah. All of the guys behind him, and this is where I need more info, it takes 12, 11 guys until you get to Tony Kemp till you get a positive defensive metric out of another left fielder. Um, what do you mean by that? I don't understand what that means. So the way they measure war. and def- Yeah, but what list are you looking at? Fan graphs. Fan oh, graphs. Fan graphs war. Yes. Okay, so you're saying that it's only him and then 12 guys down to Tony Kemp, and they're the only ones with a positive defensive so, war. And some of them half make sense. Uh, like Jordan Alvarez is on there. I mean, uh, Winker. Canna, Teoscar Hernandez, Rosarena, Schwarber, Darren Ruff, Brantley, Pollock, Verdugo, um, Robbie Grossman, uh, Tony Kemp, and Adam Duvall are next. Adam Duvall is positive. Tony Kemp's at a zero. So I need to know, because that scale doesn't feel right from what I'm reading, is how impactful is Tyler O'Neill's defense? I've heard it's good. Um, I've seen some highlights, but... Um, is it that much to bring him above? You know, Jesse Winker's having an incredible season. 560 slugging, 395 OPS. Um, do I think Tyler O'Neill's defense compared to Jesse Winker's defense brings him over him as a better player? I can't say I believe in that. Can't do but it. the point is Tyler O'Neill's offense is still good enough. Jesse Winker, 24 homers. Tyler O'Neill, 23. Um, Tyler O'Neill's having a great year. And we were asking for a Cardinals outfielder to do that, and he was the guy. Fool, Foolish Baseball was having a discussion about the different wars, and he mentioned that, that his favorite defensive stat is outs above average. You got yeah. the list up. Can you can you do that and see where, where he's at and where the rest of the guys are at? I don't know how that's calculated. Obviously, the name is easy enough. Like, how many outs do you right. make above the average player at your position? Who are we looking for? I mean... Just a leaderboard. I'm, I'm kind of trying to look for it, too. I'm just not as good at getting there. I'm I'm getting there on baseball. Baseball Savant. It has Tyler O'Neill as the number two in outs above average behind uh, Dylan Moore, who... They have listed as a second baseman, so that's a little tricky. I have Michael A. Taylor as the one, Manny Margot as two, Miles Straw as three. For all outfielders. Yeah. I was doing left fielders only. Oh. Interesting. So that's... I mean, I've, I've seen him play, and the, the highlights are incredible. He he seems like he's like a rocket out there. Built like you know, he almost He almost looks like a... looks like a safety kind of like mm. running all over the field, making plays, you know, big tackles. Like he's that built too. So it kind of plays with that, but slow reaction time, p- positive route running, good route running. Yeah. Which is my favorite um, thing about these stats. Like Mike Trout has the worst reaction time of any outfielder, yeah. but the best route running. And so he averages out JBJ, horrible route yeah. running, really 
fast first steps. Uh, Tyler O'Neill gold glove last year too. Right. That's you know, and last year they went off the metrics. So clearly the defensive metrics love Tyler O'Neill. I'm sure St. Louis Cardinals fans must. Um, but still, when you compare it value to value to player to player, I st- we still clearly don't have that perfected. Um, but yeah, to you know, a pretty well respected baseball website has Tyler O'Neill as your best left fielder this year, and that he deserves some love. And he looks good with his shirt off, so that's a plus. That's huge. That's huge. Um, yeah, because you can rip his jersey off. You know, if you don't look that great, it's, you don't want your jersey ripped off. Maybe. Um, Alonzo did it, and it was awesome because he didn't look great. Yeah, I think when you're... You can, I bet if you asked him again, he'd be like, I wish you guys didn't do that. He had to own it. I think Alonzo likes it. I think he's a shirt-off guy. Okay. Alonzo's a naturally naked guy. Alonzo eats dinner, okay. no shirt. At the table. Yes, and that's his mom tried to fight it. Milk. His mom tried to fight it for a while, and uh, like you know. sweaty all the time. Yeah, like a, the Alonzos eat dinner with their shirts off, and the mom just had to accept that. Yeah. And Does he have like a Gronk family, like a bunch of boys? It's a different vibe. Mm, it's a Florida it makes Gronk. Sense if you did. It's Florida. Gronks. It's the Florida. It's Gronks. the baseball yes. Florida Gronks. Yeah. Yeah. Be hilarious if we look it up and he's got like seven sisters. Just nice. Um, and then I mentioned, so I mentioned the GOAT, Randy Rosarena, the best ever, mm. who uh, his season was teetering. He's back at it, 275, 356, 19 homers, 13 steals, um, a little bit of everything from uh, Randy Rosarena, who also, I mean, if he goes off this postseason, he's the best player ever. Uh, hasn't been a ton of Astros love on this list, and it's about time. Kyle Tucker, man, uh, there was a graphic that popped up on the screen the other day. We we were watching uh, the Astros-Mariners game, and it was pretty funny. They butter-knifed hard to get the stats down to just Kyle Tucker and uh, Otani and Vlad, I believe. It was like walk percentage, K percentage, and slugging or something. I don't know. It was, it was a nice butter-knife by them. Kyle Tucker is having a really nice year. Uh, 286. 344, a 538 slug, a 140 weighted runs created plus. And I, I guess for him, the one thing is, you know, how many how many Houston, if I said, tell me about the Houston Astros lineup, how many guys are you naming before Kyle Tucker? And he's arguably having one of the best years on the team. I like that. And um, he, this is going to be a little strange, and I don't know why I've thought this. Maybe I've heard it somewhere. But when I watch him play, it's it's like he's like Abraham Lincoln on the baseball mm. field. If that makes sense, like if Abraham Lincoln played baseball, mm. it'd be like watching Kyle Tucker play baseball in my mind. Okay, I mean I will keep that in mind next time I watch. K-Tuck. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that, but now I do. And I yeah, I gotcha. Tall, tall, skinny, like, beard, just, yeah, high pitch voice, troublesome kids, wife hates him. Mine's lines up perfectly. I don't Can know. give a speech. Maybe the speech. We'll see on that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the all who needs to be talked about. I did have a DH. Uh, turns out it's Fran Mill. Um, oh, Oof. Noodle just got in the way of the wires again. Hey, buddy. Um, uh, Fran Mill. His home runs and his numbers are with Nelson Cruz, Giancarlo Stanton. Kind of all the class of the class DHs, except he's played thirty less games. Um, so, you know, we kind of ended with Fran Mill the other day. Always give him love. He's big. He's hot. That's my okay. list. Good job, Jake. Oh, nice job, Jake. Those are guys you need to know. Maybe you didn't know already, but you need that to was know. That's really good. It's a good job. Give guys love. Jake's putting in the work, Trev. Different. Mm. Mm. Beach, okay. Beach sprints this morning. You know what? My my conversation is going to be brought to you by mm. Magic Spoon. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes when I indulge in gummies, I like to eat magic spoon. And last night Mm -hmm. my topic came after indulging in some gummies. So magic spoon cereal. I am a subscription haver. I did it live on John boy Jake radio. When you, when you buy stuff, Hey, run something through the cart. Cause magic spoon sprinkles stuff in there that I don't think I'm allowed to like tell you guys about, but I got some upsold, some flavors and some things that I'd never saw them promote before. 
Uh, Magic Spoon cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving, only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb. You can build your own box. They have a ton of flavors. They have cookies and cream. They have maple waffle. They have blueberry, cinnamon, peanut butter, frosted, fruity, and cocoa. You can build your own bundle. You can get them, uh, get a pack. It's like a, you know, like you have a morning uh, breakfast bar, like a protein bar, but you have it mm. in delicious cereal as well. That's what they got going on here. Go to magicspoon.com slash baseball to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use promo code baseball at checkout to save $5 off your order. They're so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash baseball and use the code baseball, save $5. Okay, so I'm brushing my teeth uh, pretty, uh, you know, in it. Uh, waiting out the two minutes, which if you're high in gummies and then you go to do the two-minute toothbrush thing, it's like the longest two minutes you could possibly have in your life. So I was just thinking about the baseball that we had seen and just, you know, pondering stuff. And I got hit with like a sudden moment of clarity, and I'm, I'm late to the party. Uh, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, I don't think you are. It's going to be a Rays Giants World Series. And we can't do anything to stop it. And I need to accept that. And so does everyone else. Like, we can't be surprised by it. These two teams just don't lose. I mean, everyone's waiting for them to lose. Or maybe not the Rays, but the Giants. And they just don't lose. And the way they win is ridiculous. The Rays had no business winning that game against the Red Sox. Nelson Cruz had a little league inside the park home run. Then they tied it on, in the ninth inning with an grand inside slam. the park home run grand slam. What? That's not real. Since I've been scoreboard watching, I flip on the Rays game. They always have. They always are down. They're down after the first five innings every time I flip it on, and they always win, no matter what. The San Francisco Giants, do you remember when they came to Milwaukee and there was a fly ball to right field and that would have ended the game and the Giants would have lost, but Avisel Garcia just dropped it and the Giants went on to win that game? Remember when you know the game would have ended in a tie or prolonged, but then Will Smith at first base just didn't have his foot on the bag and the Giants win. They just win. And I have to accept it. I can't fight it any longer. So I went to see if this is backed up by any stats. Just this, like, these teams just win. And it is. So the Tampa Bay Rays have the most comeback wins in all of Major League Baseball. They have 43. The next most is 39. The Tampa Bay Rays have the third most blown leads. So when they have it, they keep it. Third most blown leads, most comeback wins. Or fewest, whatever, yeah. Third fewest blown leads. That makes sense. Okay. When they're down in the sixth inning, they have a 32% of the time they've won the game. When the Rays have been down in the sixth inning, wow. more than three out of ten, they win still. Don't give, a, don't give a crap. That's the most in Major League Baseball. When they are down in the seventh inning, they've won 28% of those games when they're down in the seventh inning. That's the most in baseball. When they're down in the eighth inning, they've won 25% of those games. Wow. One out of four when they're down in the eighth inning. That's the, that's the, that's, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. The Rays have won 23% of those games. That's the second most in baseball, down in the eighth inning. When they're down in the ninth inning, the Rays have won 15% of those games. That's the most in baseball. They simply just win. Can't die. That's incredible. Rays fans, you guys are watching incredible games. That's, they're the best comeback team in the league. It's nuts. Now, the San Francisco Giants, they're first in fewest blown leads. So when the Giants have the lead, they'll keep it. They only have 19 blown leads on the season. No other team has less than 20. They are second in winning games when they're down in the sixth to the Rays. 30% of the times they've been down in the sixth, they've won it. They're second in winning games when they're down in the seventh inning. They're first in winning games when they're down in the eighth inning. 
25% of the time, and they are second down in the ninth. So those two teams, the numbers completely back up what my high brain was trying to calculate. Like, you just can't count these two teams out. They're just going to win no matter what. Funky things. Other teams are going to make errors. You're going to have inside the park home runs. The first baseman's just not going to have a foot in the bag. Uh, so I can't fight it anymore. It'll be the Rays, Giants in the World Series. It'll be the uh, West Coast versus the East Coast. And we will all watch it. And they will be wild. And uh, who knows who, who will win. That is a nightmare for MLB, I believe. Giants are a good but market. it's going to come true because you said it's going to come true. Those numbers are crazy. Those raise numbers are insane. I wonder, it has to do with the fact that they just don't, they don't give up crooked numbers. So the games are never really, they're never four or five down. They're always going to be two, three down. And in my experience, I reference this team all the time because I saw them and they changed the way bullpens are used. The Kansas City Royals, 2014 to 2015. Didn't matter if you were up by a run or two. You needed more because you weren't going to score again in the seventh, eighth, or ninth. And even the sixth when Hochever was going nuts. It was Hochever, mm. um, Wade Davis, uh, Kelvin Herrera, and Greg Holland. You just weren't going to score. So you had to prevent them from scoring any more runs, and you knew you weren't going to score. It just, made, it just made you feel like every single game, like they had a chance. And then when that thought enters a team's mind, I mean, it lets it in. I feel like it's probably the same for both these teams. What they what they do on defense and uh, their pitching staff, their their bullpens, the way they handle their staffs, they're just. I bet you they play the closest. Like they they've had the least amount of. Um, I don't know how to say it. Like they haven't been behind by five runs very often. I bet you. If you mm, yeah, uh, I do have run. one caveat. I should have started. I only took in the numbers of playoff potential teams. So like if the Marlins are better at this, I didn't count them. Mm. Or I doubt they are. Or the Cubs. I that's the kind of thing. I did Toronto, Tampa Bay, St. Louis, Giants, Seattle, I San think Diego, you should, Philly. I think you should be good, Jim. Uh because I think our turkey math makes sense on this. The Rays are first in bullpen ERA. The Giants are number two. Um I guarantee you, however the Rays do their defensive stuff it works. <laughs> I can promise you that. I don't know what, what unit of measurements you use, but I promise you it works. And uh, San Francisco, that's the only thing I can't speak of. I've only watched so many San Francisco games, but, you know, I know Posey, uh, Belt, Longoria. Um, I'm assuming they're putting their guys in good defensive positions that, yeah, I, I, what, do, what do we even call that? Like a Ben, a Ben don't break? Like as long as you play – your good game against the Rays and the Giants, you've got a chance to win. But if you have the one reliever blow it or the one defensive error or whatever, like, then it's over. Play a perfect game. You have to be absolutely perfect from the seventh inning on if you're, un unless you're up by five or more. Yeah, and you know what I like about these two teams, or at least the what I've seen? Like, if they're, like, losing – and they're maybe they're down by five or whatever. Like then they won't they won't use their high leverage guys. Like they'll they save that for opportune times. And I think throughout a season, if if you if you approach uh, the game that way, it could help you out now, late September, October, saving those guys, keeping them in high leverage situations at all times. Unless you really need to get someone in the game because they maybe you've blown teams out for three straight and you need to get these guys. Some innings. Um, but yeah, like these two teams are they're they're top to bottom good, you know, from their roster to their to their coaching staff mm. to their front offices. Like th they're a shining examples of what organizations should be, along with the Dodgers. I think those Rays, Giants, Dodgers right now are like I, I mean maybe Houston in there as well maybe seattle now i don't know but those are the those are the teams the teams want to be like the giants have winning 25 percent of the games that they've been down in the eighth inning is that's crazy crazy the, like I said, it leads me to believe they haven't been down by a lot of runs yeah but games. still i mean that's just such comfort as a fan yeah the the rays are 20 
22.9% of the time they've they've come back and won it. Third place is down to 16. It's tr- it's the Blue Jays. I mean, you you get to fifth place and you're at 15%. It's a 10% drop off from what the Giants are doing. Nuts. 10% of games that adds up. Um yeah, and I you know, I we keep searching Jolly Olive uh project assignments. I think I just found another um, the Giants bullpen, second in ERA, first in whip, first in walks per nine. They're 28th in K per nine, which that's like a part of the kind of bullpen revolution. So do they just have weak contact kings down there, or what the hell is going on? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they they're, they're, they just have a bunch of different looks. And when I watched Gabe do the bullpen game, I, I believe it was on Sunday. I think it was on Sunday. I thought he made the moves at the right times. Like, he, mm. he, and that was a knock on Gabe. Good managing. Philadelphia, my goodness. Good managing. It's not just him, though. It's not just right. him. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I know their assistant co- pitching coach is J.P. Martinez, my friend. And is Andrew Bailey their pitching coach? Andrew Bailey, the old. Yeah, I mean, I looked in the dugout. And he was. I thought it was him. I guess I should know that. I am the champion of the staff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, or Red Sox. It's an easy search. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's him, right? Really? Yeah. He pitched in 2017. He's their, he's their head pitching coach. No different. Gabe's different. What do you think about the Giants taking BP the way they do? Uh, Trev, I think Eno tweeted about how there's some hub hub about it. I think it's great. And I think. More and more people are accepting. I mean, look, no hitters like BP. Nobody likes BP, really. Like the fans like BP. Every once in a while, it's nice to go whack some balls around, get outside, get loose a little bit. But BP isn't going to make you improve. Like visually, that's what it's there for. You get the visual. I think if teams went in and took batting practice the first day they got into a city, boom, you're good. You get the visual, you get the backdrop, and you go. But you know, you're lobbing balls at 40 miles an hour it doesn't do anything for your swing except make you feel confident and you know maybe you see how the park plays a little bit so defensively it's nice to get out there for bp but if you want to improve if you want to get better like they're throughout baseball i mean there's different techniques that are going on right now i love high velo machines i love getting in there against a high velo machine and just taking get your kit like slow everything down uh, they're doing that. They're doing breaking balls with these machines. And honestly, when I'm, when I was playing like that stuff, nobody wanted to do that because it's hard. That's like, you're actually practicing. You know, if you're going up there, you're going to get worn out by some machines. Sometimes that fucking slider machine is going to wear you out. That Vila machine is going to wear you out, but you are going to improve more than if you're just up there having some dude toss you the ball. Is there going to be a day when we're, Makes a lot of sense to me. When we're old men and our kids are watching baseball teams get ready with velo machines and then they show a highlight of someone taking how they batting see practice, how they just lob it, and they're like, what was that? The way they do batting practice now, it feels like almost uh, being in the on-deck circle and swinging a wiffle ball bat for practice instead of a donut. Like, you're supposed to yeah, make see, things even, even that's outdated. Like, a donut doesn't even really help you. Well, who I was it? Adamus used a donut upside down. The Slab. upside down donut I like to do because oh, you it just, did that. Yeah, uh, it it does like they their studies like you have to do a multiple different weights to increase your bat speed, and so like the on deck circle is strictly just for getting loose and like that's even that's old school. Honestly, I was it's trying to, to speed up the. Game. I was trying to convince <laughs> Braun to to get on there and like do some crunches, like some core activation mm. or something like that. <laughs> like I feel like that probably is the future. It's just it's it's a get loose, get your body ready station, maybe just line up with a pitcher. I think that's probably the number one thing. Like yeah. let's, let's get eyes and get your, get your timing. But I think I have all to start things swinging are right for change. I think I have to start swinging both ways when I'm in the on deck circle, when we play blitz ball, that's because I am a two way player, very, you know, so I got to keep my balance. It's popular to do that now. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do that because they, you know, you want to treat your obliques the same on both sides, keep it even. So you're you're ahead of the curve there, Jim. We got a big game coming up uh, this week. So Tomorrow? how's your leg? Uh, C Rose wanted me to ask you that. How's your leg doing? 
I can walk normally. We played spike ball on the beach yesterday, and I actually like made a couple plays, and I was shocked I didn't slightly like have anything. It's just very, very tight. I jumped over the spike ball net because Luke's fed me in front, and then I went behind my legs like Agassi. Is that the tennis player that always Ooh. did that? It's a few now, but yeah. Or is it? Or is it Roddick? There's one that like there's like, Agassi. Ag- there's like YouTube uh, compilations of him doing it constantly. Mm-hmm. And I thought when I did that, I was like in the air. I was like, "Oh fuck, my ham- hammy's going to go again," and didn't. So I guess I'm all right. All right, we'll see. All right, Trav, your conversation is uh, a little bit of a build off mine because my conversation is the Rays and the Giants are in the World Series. Your conversation, which is brought to you by DraftKings, which is the mm. best uh, sports betting app out there and the official sports betting partner of the NFL. NFL is returning DraftKings and giving two new customers is giving new customers two hundred dollars in free bets instantly when you bet one dollar or more on any football game. Sounds like if you were taking my advice, I'd bet the over and the Rams because Trev's going to be in the building and that's just a lot of good juju going on there. If you want to take that, you go to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY and you receive two hundred dollars in free bets, hundred on the over, hundred on the Rams. Uh, and when you place a one dollar bet, or you, you got to place a one dollar bet on the yes. football game, then you get the two hundred, and you can do that. Uh, you get a free shot at a million dollar top prize with your first deposit. That's promo code John Boy this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be twenty one or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Minimum five dollar deposit and one dollar wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, call gam call one eight hundred gambler in Indiana, one eight hundred nine with it. With it. One dollar to get two hundred, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Love it. I didn't do that ad read already, right? I'm having like a weird deja vu. Deja vu all over again. Mm. I did it for talking Yanks earlier today. That could be it. I don't know how you want me to do this. Am I going to ask you guys the same question, or am I just going to give my That's up to you. You definitely... Give us your thoughts. Give us your thoughts. We'll react. That's what we do. We do well. What I wanted to do is that now, at this point in the season, we kind of know who the teams are, who who the big boys are. And I wanted to know, my question was going to be, what is your dream... World Series matchup, like the best baseball that can be played, the most thrilling matchup that you can think of. Now, James kind of just said, this is what's going to happen. I don't think that's your most, your dream matchup, James. Yes. Um, Could be wrong about that, but my dream matchup, and then if you guys want to join in uh, and talk about it, uh, go ahead. But my dream matchup, and apparently Jake, you referenced this, some other show we we record a lot episode 388 talking baseball dodgers white Sox, for a lot of different reasons one i'll start off with the superficial stuff love the color combo the palette will be beautiful (laughs) the dodgers um what are those called in the city connect uniforms really grew on me when i saw them wear them in san francisco the hats are dodger The hats are bad, but the rest of it's kind of fun. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They should have been Los Doyers. Mm. I'm fine with Los Dodgers. That's okay. The hats, I, I, I agree. I just, that, that much blue, Dodger blue is very iconic here in LA. So when you see it, like that much of it, it, it it's, it's got me going. I like it a lot. Those jerseys with the White Sox City Connect jerseys, which are widely considered the best ones of the year, I think will be just like A plus viewing pleasure stimulation for the eyes. I don't know if they'd let them do that in the World Series. Uh, so I like that. But then you start go- just going over the star power, the actual lineups, the roster construction of these two teams. And like pound for pound, this is like heavyweight, heavyweight matchup. This is what I want to see. Do you guys want me to read off those lineups? Sure. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody knows the Dodgers lineup. You got Trey Turner, Max Muncie, Mookie Betts, Justin Turner, Corey Seager, Will Smith, Chris Taylor, CT3, and Belly. Yep. That's a freaking... Like, Belly's your hole. He's the weak spot. 
Belly is your weak spot, and, and at any second, he could just turn it on and become the 2019 MVP of the National League. But White Sox, you go to them. Tim Anderson, Luis Robert, Yuan Moncada, Jose Abreu, Eloy Jimenez, Yasmani Grandel. Teeters off a little bit at the end. Cesar Hernandez, good at bat, good switch hitter, going to give you a quality at bat. Andrew Vaughn has been really good at like him. Adam Engel, a five-tool kind of guy, been really good for them. Like These are two absolute juggernaut lineups. I don't think they're two better lineups in baseball right now. Watching those guys go toe-to-toe would be incredible uh, for everybody. Then you go to the pitching staffs. What do we always say? You need top three dudes. You need three horses. And then you get, need to line up your bullpen the way it needs to be. Well, the Dodgers, we know who those guys are for them. Or actually, we don't. I mean, we know the top two. We know Scherzer and Bueller are going to be there. Then you got Urias. Kershaw just started a freaking rehab assignment today. Travis. Gonsolin started another rehab if assignment. If it ain't broke. I mean, if Kershaw gets back and looks like Clayton Kershaw, you kick Urias to the pen and you kick say, let's bullpen. do what oh, yeah. we did last year, babe. 100%. And then you go to the White Sox. And you got Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn and G Leader are on the D- IL right now. They'll be fine. You got Lance Lynn, Lucas G Leader, Carlos Rodon. You can kick Dylan Cease to the bullpen. And we know all about their bullpen with Hendricks, uh, Kimbrell, Bummer, Crochet, and what and Kopek. Like these are just absolutely two juggernaut teams that like anytime a player is on the field in especially during the postseason, you're gonna be like, that's an that's like an elite player. And I don't think you can say that for most other teams. Like, I don't think there is another team that you can say that about. So to me, this would be by far the most ideal dream matchup. Two big markets. You get LA, you get Chicago. Uh, aesthetically pleasing uniforms. And then the star powers, crazy. Can you imagine that swaggy, swaggy lineup of the White Sox in the World Series already feeling themselves because they won the Central they win the uh, the DS, then the CS, and they're just, I would love to see it. And I think that is my dream matchup. And I'm really curious if you guys have any lean for your dream matchup. Huh. I think if you ask me this and I'm in a room by myself and I haven't heard anyone else's picks, I, I, I land at the same conclusion you did. So for the sake of the... Uh, experiment or exercise the sake of the exercise i'll just not put the dodgers there because the white Sox are my runaway in the al Um, okay obviously as a yankees fan i'd like them but the starting pitching the bullpen and the flair of their players of their studs and how and then there's a part of me where like you know we don't need to grow baseball in la anymore Mm. but if you get that some kids in Chicago um, that now have heroes and now they have names because they're, they're a huge playoff run. And like that part of Chicago, th- those guys would like own that moment so much because they are so fun. Yeah. So hard for me to not say the White Sox. Astros have already done it. Um, it would obviously make great drama and television if it's Astros Dodgers. Um, if it's not Astros Dodgers, then I don't. I'm not interested in watching the Astros again, uh, even though I do love Framber and a lot of those guys and what Dusty's doing. Uh, the, then the other option for me in the NL is the Brewers because I think the environment after the Bucks winning and then closing that roof, mm. I think you tune in for games and you're going to be blown away by the noise. And I'm a little biased because we just went there and we saw the Bud Selig experiment and they had old footage from when that city and that town was rocking. I also think you have enough star appeal and then you're going to build so many stars in those starting pitchers, in those relievers. And then, you know, in some of the fun guys like Adamas or uh, even, um, uh, I mean, obviously Yelly's a star, even who was I thinking of? Uh, Garcia, um, Wong, Lokane's fun. So, I think I'm landing White Sox Brewers. 
And hopefully the coasts just care enough to tune in, and then you know you get some Midwest baseball. Also aesthetically pleasing, those two uniforms would go well together, and the proximity of the two cities is yeah, would be cool. Get the RV back out. Yeah, we'll I, be I, there. I think Pat, you said it the best, Trev. It it's a heavyweight fight if it's Dodgers White Sox and those big boys on the mound every game. I mean. It's if the game if the series went seven games, I think six out of seven you'd have elite pitching matchups, which you can't really say around the league. Um, but the only thing that I think I would just add a little salt and pepper on the conversation is the other side of the playoffs. That you know, I think the position roster everyone gets used. Like look at Brett Phillips coming into that game. Like I, I think. Your your depth on that side gets tested more than your pitching. Like your last guy in the bullpen, he could not be impactful in the series at all. Uh, even your last three guys in the pen, they they could really not factor in. So that's where I do think <clears throat> you guys are right. Everything you said. I want to see when October gets here, and boy, what a time it's going to be! Beach week in our rear view. I mean, straight hoodies. You know, it, oh, it's, I can't it, wait for it's John Malama ding dong season in October. Yeah. And my baby's now scheduled to come a week earlier. Baby so. on the way. Pop that bad boy I out. Might be out on the Work playoffs. <laughs> um, so we'll we figure that out. We'll figure that out as we go. Um, just stirring the pot strictly at the end of this episode. Whatever team finds a little magic, like, could we not make. Could we not make, if they start to fully click and you go playoff rosters, Phillies or the Padres, man? I, I know they are clearly not on the tiers of the teams we just talked about. But if you're going rotation, if Musgrove, Snell, and Darvish have clicked, if Wheeler, Nola, Gibby have clicked, and is Suarez there, Urias? Mm. Those teams have lineups. You know, I... They are not on the same tier. But that's where the baseball playoff magic gets really fun. That, like, it would be, that'd be yeah. a good time. Yeah. That was, that, I think that was everyone's preseason, like, give us your dream scenario. It'd be White Sox, Padres. Like, that's. That was the video fun game. Yeah. Baseball. That was the video yeah. game. Yeah. That's like stars. Like, we're going to, we're going to attract the young audience because of wh- how these dudes played the game. And I think that's that would be great for baseball as well. So I, I like the Padres pick in there. Chicago Padres, Padres would be great. It's funny that we're all picking Chicago would be the funnest to watch in the playoffs. And really, I know we, we just we talk about them, but we sort of just glance by them because they've had zero competition. Like I'm so excited for them to get into the playoffs and just see – can they flip that switch? No one confused this with me saying I, the White Sox are my favorite. I mean, the Rays well, are in the World Series, but they'd be the most fun. The Rays have been in the World Series. They don't know how to build stars, even if they have them. The Houston's been around. Everyone knows those players. So the White Sox is new star building, new growth, and I like the way they construct their lineup and they use their starters and relievers. Well, let's see what happens. I can't wait, man. It's it's here. Mm, kind of. It's here. A little close. You guys still got a lot of sweat. You guys got a lot of sweat to go through, man. I, I'm excited for you. No joke. Yeah, it's it's too hot. This is Tumbleweed Tuesday in town, though, Trev. Whole town. Yep. Whew, everyone leaves. Just us. I like that. Yeah. We're actually going to go to lunch as a little company outing. So that ends that the show. Really nice. This is the best episode I'm gonna, ever. I'm gonna go to uh, sushi for lunch. Send a pic of your wife. credit card, Trev. I'll tell I'll tell okay. the gals you snagged it. Okay. Everyone, leave in the comments, Trevor, what you think Trevor's credit card is. Guess Trevor's credit card number, and then also uh, let us know out of ten how good this episode was. Oh. Only allowed to write eight or higher. Yeah. And don't care about any opinion if it's less than that. Eight. Eight or higher. Standard, you know. bro. What, or we're, we're a B podcast? No, I just think we can have better apps. We will when we're reacting. So I don't want to, you know, figure skating. You can't just say a 10 out of 10. 
Okay. Because then you lessen, why would anyone listen to more? We'll never beat it. If everyone's a 10, though. Jake did so much research. I build up every episode. I was so good. Google Sheet, copy, paste, copy, paste, sort, sort Google Sheet, color coded over here. I use my notes app on my MacBook. It's hell yeah. It's big. It's good stuff by all of us. That's the episode, and we appreciate you dearly, and we Love. hope you have a fantastic day. And goodbye. <laughs>